We're about to watch a multiple six figure day trade being executed on the price ladder by elite Axia trader Demetrius over the last European Central Bank rate decision that took place on February 2022. What is great about this video is how Demetrius starts trading short dated bond futures such as the German bubble five year futures contract. As we all know, the path to excellence requires one to always learn new methods of exploiting opportunity and in a rate driven market environment, understanding how to trade short dated bonds provides you with the biggest opportunity set you would otherwise have. Those who do not understand the relationship between bonds and global markets in an inflationary driven environment will be doing a massive disservice to their trading performance. Just four months ago, we were preparing our trainee traders on our 12 month coaching program to be ready for this in 2022. So for those who have followed Demetrius trading over the past six years and has seen his exponential growth, where we have shared many of his live trades on our YouTube channel. And one of the main reasons we share his videos is because we want to show what is possible as a day trader with an unquenchable desire to improve every single day and year and show how the human trader is as relevant today as he was before the systems traders and the algo traders started becoming an excuse for day traders to blame their lack of performance. So for those who have never traded on the price ladder, you may find this video a little hard to understand. But if you wish to know more, we have some free training modules both on our YouTube site as well as on our price ladder course that has free training modules. So you can go over there and have a look. Okay, so let's get started with this video and the incredible lessons from his trading leading into this week's European Central Bank rate decision. Okay, so let's get started. Now we always start with context and Demetrius is incredible and at understanding the nature of movements into these events and which markets are prone for big moves and which are prone to choppy moves. So the context leading into this ECB, whilst, and, and this is directly from uh, Demetrius's prep into this. So as you start decoding this, you'll understand how you can prepare for uh, the central bank rate uh, decision. But if you wanted to learn more, we also have a central bank trading course. While most big central banks, including the Fed, ECB and Bank of Canada, have acknowledged upside risk to inflation and prepared the markets for rate hikes, the ECB distanced itself from other central banks by communicating the rise in Eurozone inflation is only temporary and not a cause of concern. And that was the theme all of 2021 on the back of the supply chain shocks after COVID. There was everything was transitory. But then we had this flip from the Fed and uh, the Bank of England. And so we wanted to see, would this be the case with the ECB this year? Would they be one of the last central banks to go from uh, expecting uh, a more low rate environment or potential hikes? So now, although the US and U UK yield curves have flattened aggressively since the Fed and BOE turned hawkish on anticipation of rate hikes in 2022, the German yield curve has remained relatively steeper as ECB maintained its dovish guidance. And so this was important, you know, our, you know, yield curves back at the back end of last year and trading stirs is uh, what you see that corrective action in short dated bonds. So it is so important that all of a sudden, you know, especially in the Fed, if you were a short dated bond trader, there was so much opportunity to be trading. And, uh, and so having to upskill in this area, you know, a lot of you have seen uh, Demetrius trade, the long end bonds, the equity indices. And so he has been upskilling himself in the shorter dated bonds, because when those yields, when they expect rate hikes, those bonds move much more aggressively than the longer dated bonds on a relative basis perspective. And this was key and important. Would we see the baton being passed over from the Fed, Bank of England, and other central banks who were turning hawkish into the ECB? Okay, so we will watch over here. Now, this was his scenario. So our trader, having observed the hawkish pivots of other central banks 
are eagerly awaiting for the ECB to also turn hawkish by acknowledging upside risk to inflation. And it's all the traders were looking at the beginning of this year is with the ECB pivot and the lessons that we learned at how the, uh, the bond markets moved on the back of last year in the, uh, in the um, US and UK market. We wanted to be there when the moment was ripe for this trading opportunity. So in such a scenario, we should see a broad Euro, uh, Eurozone bond sell-off with the short end of the German curve leading the move to the downside. So, you know, and this would, uh, the, this is important. You know, if you're trading the, the FX futures, you're trading the equity indices, understanding what's happening in the short day to the bonds is gonna help you. You know, there are the biggest markets on the planet, the bond markets. They eclipse by, I don't know, two to three X, uh, the, uh, the, the stock market. So these are important markets uh, to understand. So, and then the peripheral bonds, because as we know, since uh, COVID, since um, the European uh, uh, you know, issues of sovereign crisis, that uh, the ECB has been supporting the peripheral bonds uh, significantly, and they should also get hit hard on a policy shift by the ECB. And whereas on the flip side, if the ECB just maintains its current stance, which is what most market participants expect for this meeting, we shouldn't expect any significant reaction in the bonds. Okay, so we're watching our trade at the moment. Leading into this, he's, he's around uh, you know, just, just under uh, you know, $50,000 day, um, $50,000 down on the day. So at 12.45, the ECB policy statement was almost identical to the previous meeting with no significant changes. So there's no real trading opportunity over here. So we can see he's, he's uh, you know, and, and you'll start watching. Then what we're looking for is at the 1.30 press conference. So it's another 45 minute break and then the 1.30 press conference. So at the 1.30 press conference uh, that gets underway, Lagarde started making upbeat comments on inflation that sparked an initial bond sell-off. And we'll observe over here, Dimitri starts positioning short in the bond and the bubble with relatively small size. The move will accelerate soon as those statements drop. And I want you to see over here, regard, uh, regard, no, and if I should just go back one, if I just go back one measure over here, if we look over here, uh, look over here, is likely to remain high in the near term. We know that. She said that, you know, other central bank, but we don't want to know what they think of inflation in the medium term. She mentions here, yeah, food prices have increased, and in, dishes, uh, in addition, price rises have become more wide spread. So as a trader sitting there listening uh, to her economic assessment, her inflation assessment, you sitting there on the desk and all our traders are incredibly listening, you know, with their ears uh, whilst watching closely the ladder and seeing activity and trying to synchronize that process. And this is where Demetrius uh, is excellent, his ability to synchronize all the audio visual field to digest all the information. And it's a trained skill that he's cultivated over a decade long um, career in the markets. So let's watch over here. So Lagarde says risk to inflation outlook tilted to the upside. Lagarde drops the first inflation bond uh, bomb. So watch over here. He's he instantly so you can see he has all these resting bids. You know, they're all you know, those of you who watched him in the past, he, he normally litters it with one to two lots. Uh, this is his short position, 165 lots short in the Bund and uh, 67 lots short in the bubbles. That's a five year futures market. Uh, so these are the markets. So this is the Bund. This is the bubble over here. This is uh, 6E. And we're watching. And what I'm going to do for you just in a moment. So he instantly pulls his resting bids in the bund and hits the bids in bund and the bubble. So he short 612 bunds immediately. We've seen how aggressive he can be when there's vindication in his conviction. And he's now still at 60 lots short in the bubble. So let's see. So now the market, uh, you can also see the BTP starting to offer. So short 612 lots and uh, 780 bubbles. So you saw he went and he increased aggressively. He's over 1,250 lots uh, sh short. So you can see as he's getting short and he's gone 120 lots short in the BTP. So this is Italian bonds, uh, Italian 10 year bond, German 10 year bond and the bubble. And you'll start watching how he dances and navigates his mouse 
across these three uh, markets. Again, a highly trained skill that, that can be acquired, but takes time and years of uh, refinement as he's updating his information, how the marks are absorbing his, his uh, buy orders, and that's why he flickers them around as uh, he gets into his uh, position, building a substantial position, over 1,300 lots uh, short currently in the market. Okay, so we're watching his mouse over here, building and navigating between here, the Bund over there. Now, there's a deep pullback from the lows across all three bond markets, the Bund, the Bobble, and the BTP. The longer end of the curve bounces a lot more than the short end of the curve. And we knew this preparing, you know, especially in our 12-month coaching program uh, with a lot of the students last year, is the moment the central bank would flip that shorter dated bonds would hold an offer and you might get and that's where you start getting the flattening as the long end starts correcting relative to the short end if you don't understand that don't worry if you want to understand more please um you know, let us know, send an email, and we can uh, direct you the right way. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a big PL swing, but he tries to hold on to most of this of his size. So you can see he went, you know, to up around 60,000 back down to uh, $30,000. Uh, uh, $30, so we've had this bounce. You can see the bubbles bounce less. Uh, the Bund has bounced, uh, you know, more as well as the Bund. We don't have the shats over here, I don't think. No, we don't. So you can't see that's you know, pretty much holding its low. So he still has 1,000. 300 contracts and then the acknowledgement from Lagarde that inflation risks are now tilted to the upside is the first explicit hawkish comment from the ECB head okay and then the moment the moment she says that you can see you know the, the, the market so it's come back to his original position he starts flickering his orders on the bid so he puts out all these resting uh, orders on the bid he's dancing between the uh, the btp over here the bund and now the markets will now focus so she's read out her economic assessment now the markets will now focus on the q a and the key is to see how the ecb is prepared to respond to the upside inflation risks and whether they are ready to stop the QE and begin raising rates this year. And whilst he's engineering is short, we, we still want to understand these two key questions. One, will the ECB rate, uh, um, uh, what does ECB think of inflation in the medium term? And will ECB acknowledge inflation uh, for now? And will they be looking to hike rates this year or still on their back of, you know, 2000, back end of 2023 and 24? So as a trader sitting here, listening in, you're trying to cultivate this narrative. And this is what separates the human from machine is our ability to think in story. And so he's constantly lining up the story and seeing what's happening on the order flow in order to trade. And it's just an incredible skill uh, to watch right here. So we're observing here again, you know, the, the market hasn't really done anything yet. OK, so we've had the we had the Q&A. I mean, we've had the uh, the statement drop at 12.45. We've had the, uh, the, the uh, her original start of the press conference and uh, her reading the economic and inflation assessment. We're now going into the Q&A portion. Market hasn't done much. You can see uh, he's now, you know, he's not getting that price response. And this is where he's so brilliant no matter what he thinks fundamentally if he's not getting that price response he's going to be managing his risk accordingly so you can see he's navigating between around 900 uh, contracts short to 1300 contracts short and uh, and we'll watch now you know yeah he's not achieving much in terms of pnl at this stage as the market stall after the first move down the q a will be critical as she will expand and i've mentioned this on on the governing council's view on inflation so as we're watching, you know, again, you know, 950 contracts short, he's, uh, the BTP is slowly starting to etch back down. So is the Bund. So is the bubble. Now they start making another fast run and dive towards the low, but still not significant. You know, he's on side in the Bunds around, you know, 12, 13 ticks, uh, the bubble. Uh, but his position, he's gone back to just over a thousand contracts as uh, short at the moment so just around a thousand contracts short now he's trimming the short positions as the market rolls over but trying to hold the majority because she could say anything in the q a she could say that inflation is still temporary transitionary uh, we expect to only raise rates in 2024 and uh, acknowledge you know that this is still just a supply chain uh, 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 shock and we don't expect inflation to hold so he knows but he knows there is potential for a big move 
if Lagarde expands on the hawkish comments, because this is what the trade has been waiting for since the Fed and the, BO, uh, and the BOE pivot. And uh, does that hawkish comment open the door to future rate hikes? Okay, so we still, so he's in his uh, uh, position now, you know, keeps on bouncing around 92, 93s, 94s. He's, he's managing. He's still got around 1,000 contracts short. He wants to hold as many as he waits to hear for any big shift in any of the Q&A session that Lagarde gets asked during uh, the press conference. So you can see now it bounces from the 92s. Uh, you know, back up again. So he's trimming his positions. He's now back to just over, um, ju just under 900 lots short in the market. So we're watching this uh, very closely. And we've just got about another, uh, you know, uh, four more minutes to show his trading as the Q&A starts hitting. And uh, we will be, be uh, you know, navigating uh, for that moment when she does make that maneuver and that move. So he's now 600 lot short. So another 10 tick pullback. So you can see it's choppy. It's, it's you know, but he's still wanting to navigate and hold some type of short position uh, whilst the Bund uh, is, you know, is during that low area. And if she does pivot, you know, the probability skew could be massive. So uh, as mentioned, you know, there's that another 10 tick pullback. He's, uh, you know, just, you know, rotating between $30,000 um, down to fifty thousand dollars up with a thousand contracts. So essentially, he's not really swinging that much PL considering the size he's trading. So now the Lagarde's Q and A begins. So this is the moment right now that uh, begins, and all eyes on comments on inflation uh, rate hikes. So she says here, my first uh, one would be in light of record inflation re uh, um, reading seen in uh, uh, January for the eurozone. How did the discussion go in the Euros, uh, the governing council? So that's the question. The second one, you have been saying that rate hikes this year is highly unlikely. What are you saying now? Are you sticking to highly unlikely or have you moved on? So these are the questions they asked her. So now this is important. As a trader, your ears are plugged in, your finger is on the mouse, and you're willing, you know, you're wanting to see that any little word or, or, or a shift, you're wanting to act. So those are the first two questions. Okay, and so we're watching the markets come back above his price uh, that he was originally short, around the threes and the fours. So we're watching incredibly closely at the moment. Okay, and so the market is navigating uh, between you know, the 03s, the 92s, and then Lagarde says, drops the second inflation bomb that the governing council as a whole is concerned about inflation. The entire trading floor, you know, on the f uh, floor that Demetrius trades, you know, everyone was just, you know, all of a sudden there was this uh, unison of, you know, she's concerned, she's concerned. And we haven't ever heard her say that. She was concerned. And the moment she said that, you know, all the traders, it was almost this unified force. Uh, you could sense almost that sense of occasion and the traders needing to execute. And so let's watch what he does over here. As the moment she says, we are concerned, watch his position. So he's 300 lots short the, uh, uh, you know, so he held most of his uh, positions over here and 500 lots short in the uh, bubble, 350 in the Bund and uh, 50 lots short in uh, the BTP. And then he so now he starts selling more bonds. So you'll start seeing he starts selling 400, 500. So he sold an extra 200 lots there. He's now 700 lots uh, short in the uh, bond. He's gone. He's going to sell more BTP. So watch here. He's gone from uh, short 60, and he's going to start. Watch the mouse over here. So you can see now the marks are really trucking down. He's now 1,300 contracts short. And when she said she is concerned, this was. The moment to take on the risk, all that prep months, you know, over 1,000 is almost 1,500 lots short position across the Bund, the Bobble, and the BTP. So he's getting involved in this short position. He's, uh, you know, remember where it was holding below the 94s, 93s, and then the market really starts uh, moving towards the downside. So we're watching closely the Bobble. Uh, you know, holding his size, still 1,000, just under 1,400 contracts uh, short in the market. He's up around 120,000, but he knows this has much more leg room to go. So he wants to try and manage as much of the position, as much of the core, uh, with that word that she says she is concerned with inflation. 
So again, he's you know you know now in the you know six figure range, you know about 150k. Uh, you can see the BTP now is really starting to make more lows, leading the way. We can't see the shats that will be uh, holding a, a blow. He then now starts buying the euro. So this is where he starts seeing the right reaction in these core cool markets. So then he feels, well, now it's the right time to get into the bold year. Look at the BTB flying off the page, you know, flying off the page. Now the PL he crosses just above the $200,000 mark as the bond sells off and accelerates. He short the buns. Uh, you can see the bubble is holding low. The buns is a little bit more choppy, but the short end bond, the five-year bubble, this is a market he never traded before, and he's now seven, almost 700 contracts, uh, you know, 700 uh, contracts short. He starts going on side in the euro. It's around 80 lots. His mouse is dancing between four markets. He then sells another 50 lots B2B. So he's 60 lots short. He then sells another 50 lots, 103 lots. He knows how important this comment is. He's seeing the right price action, the right correlation across all these markets he's navigating accordingly he's now going approximately you know, two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars just under three hundred thousand uh, dollars on the trade still around a thousand contracts uh, short the bund is smashing through new lows the bobble is making new lows uh, Lagarde then starts answering the second question on rate hikes so the ears are plugged in again and on the second question of rate hikes He's listening in there, and then she drops the third bombshell. The ECB is open to rate hikes in 2022. Now, for the last year, for the last 12 months, all we have been listening to, all we've been uh, understanding is that rates aren't going up anytime soon. And with the whole movement in, in inflation, this was the next big question, is that she was open to rate hikes in 2022. And so after answering the second question, Lagarde declines to repeat her pledge that rate hikes are unlikely to happen in 2022. It's what she's done in the past and the market has its next leg down. And so she officially now opens the door to rate hikes. The short end of the curve led by the two year shats takes a very big hit. And, and, and then the bubble bun and B2B follow while the euro rallies so we start watching it you know watch the euro watch how he starts building his position he's now just added another 120 contracts watch the bund so now let's look at this market this is uh, the bubble and this is him you know the mapping you know way sort of exiting inflation tilted to the upside that was the first move it was you know a little bit uh, you know choppy for a while this is the bubble and then there was the unanimous concern that was the next big leg and then uh, the guard declining to repeat that rate increase uh, hikes and that's this move over here so it, you know so key and now we look at the bund and so the bund you know you know almost the same but let's now look at the btp as that gets released and then finally um you know the euro usd so these are the markets you can see the correlations between each other the uh, peripheral bonds such as the italian btp the bund and the bubble and so the three catalysts for the market moves in number one, inflation tilted to the upside. Number two, unanimous concern on inflation and acknowledgement that the rates can rise in 2022. So this is incredible, incredibly key of how you're going to be trading is knowing what you're looking for. And that's why the preparation is so important. You know, it's what we talk about in our live virtual trading floor experience. Okay, so we're watching the price action now. And you can see, you know, these incredible moves across the bonds. So his PL approaches five hundred thousand dollars as he rebuilds a large short position in the bonds. So you can see he's over one thousand three hundred contracts uh, short, or you know, four hundred and seventy uh, lots short in the uh, the the bond, almost nine hundred contracts short the bubble, one hundred eighteen contracts long the euro, and sixty three uh, contracts short on the on the btp okay so aggressive price action aggressive uh you know price action cost of the markets all those three important things that he was looking out for now he felt that this was such a significant shift in policy from ecb so he tried running the big size across all the markets you can see now he's almost five hundred and fifty thousand dollars on side and in the money and we we're watching this you know incredible trading of the market now the key here is that he puts himself in a position to capitalize massively if the bonds kept selling off by trying to run large size in all the markets 
that he was in. And this is important. This is where, where, where sometimes he might give back a bit of PL, but it's in order to have much more asymmetry on the other side. And uh, you can see the market starts bouncing from the extremes as he starts winding down his positions. You've always noticed that in the past videos of Demetrius, how good he is at winding down risk exposure and how to optimize risk exposure or risk expansion when things are moving in his favor and doing that in a very accelerated uh, fashion you know he's up around you know just around four hundred thousand dollars and then there's that final capitulation in the bottle uh, you know in, in the month uh, in the bonds in the end after losing some of his pnl on the bounce from the lows he repositioned short in the bubble for the last capitulation leg of the move to finish on a pnl high and this was important and now if you remember on the bloomberg articles that come out the next day. This is what you know, traders effectively, day traders effectively writing the articles that are going to be uh, uh, read at the end of the day, but we have to act in real time. And the ECB's, you know, it's from Bloomberg, ECB's hawkish pivot uncorks new wave of bond volatility, front end German yield curves. And this is what he's been learning over the past year. Uh, uh, weekly surges not seen in years. And then a very popular and famous hedge fund, Brevin Howard, had one of its biggest trading days on ECB bets. Well, the ECB, uh, you know, and President Lagarde uncorked the genie by refusing to rule out rate increases in a post-review comments. And, you know, Brevin Howard, multi-billion, one of the biggest interest rate traders on the planet. This was their biggest, well, you know, uh, their best trading day ever. You know, one of the best trading days ever. And for our traders on this and for, um, you know, was, was the ability to make sure that you capitalize on these moments, this sense of occasion, working all the years of you know, gr you know, grinding out PL when these moments come, the ability to capitalize. And that's what Demetrius is so fantastic at his ability to shift from first to sixth gear in a blink of an eye. And so, the key takeaways and summary is a big shift from a major central bank. How do you prepare for it? You know, could you see it coming? What was, you know, what were we doing in order for our traders to be ready for this moment? And what are the clues from the other central banks? And then your visualization strategy. This is where he's so powerful. This is what we talk about in our, uh, you know, in our blueprint training program at the end of our career program is the various types of visualization strategies that we adopt and which products will offer the best risk reward. You know, and this is why he decided to trade the bubble. You know, if, you know, a few years ago when there's no moving interest rate environment, you could trade the bunds and the other markets. And then the yield curve dynamics. You know, we are entering a global rate hiking cycle as inflation keeps accelerating globally. Understanding the yield curve is so crucial. Seeing what's happening, and this is a skill set that probably most of you out there don't understand the relationship between the short bonds and the long bonds. And it's what we're upskilling and training our traders even on our six-week uh, career program. When last year, seeing how the Fed and the Bank of England were moving their short-dated interest rate markets, that we were going to make sure that we were going to take advantage when the European Central Bank would move. And now that we head into this European Central Bank rate decision on Thursday on the back of the Ukrainian-Russian crisis, it's going to be dynamically to, uh, to see what's going to be happening. And his training execution, three trigger points where the big size was executed, knowing exactly what he's looking for, what were the right questions, and this was key, you know, and this is what, you know, uh, Demetrius, he backs his conviction when he hears what he wants to hear and he's getting the right price response. As an elite trader, this is how he executes. And not only is he fundamentally aware, it needs to synchronize with the price action awareness. And so those are those three uh, big trigger points. Inflation tilted to the upside, one, unanimous concern on inflation, that word concern, understanding the adjectives, and leaving the door open for 2022 rate hikes. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did delivering it. So much to learn from, but it all starts with piecemeal development and learning at the beginning of your career. If you find this video interesting, if you want to go deep into the Axia training method and how our trading team of seven figure traders develop setups and strategies and how they learn to build the most profitable trades across all market environments, then join me in this workshop. Now in this workshop, you're going to learn three powerful steps we use to train all our traders on both our London and our Poland trading desks to help build incredible levels of consistency. How to predictably understand which setups work and which don't. You're going to learn our two main strategies for how we perfect our trade timing before we enter every single trade. You're going to learn the VEL concept, 
which is our one and only technique we use to leverage our largest trades. You'll also learn how to avoid trading setups that don't work, how to avoid those large losses, and our main method we use to identify them that saves our traders significant amounts of capital. Finally, you will learn how our traders use the power of network learning to find market patterns quicker than ever before, so you shortcut that learning curve. In the workshop, we want to program your awareness of elite performance, to program your ability to choose the right setups, and program your ability to be a consistent trader. So the trades that you execute become more simple and clearer. And I can tell you this, you'll never see the markets the same again. You'll never look at the markets with a narrow view of getting lost in all the noise and confusion. You'll take your first step towards a deep edge market awareness. I cannot wait for you to join me in this workshop. And I think you're in for a massive paradigm shift in your understanding of how to develop as a trader. So join me by clicking on the top right hand corner of the screen and sign up for this powerful training workshop or visit EliteTraderWorkshop.com.